Hey everyone, so uh, I had another dream the other night and I thought I would uh, share it. Um, I had to do a lot of research on this one because I wasn't sure what exactly the Lord was telling me with this dream. But uh, I'm going to tell you the dream and then I'm going to share what I received from the Spirit. Um, probably maybe a few days later, maybe a week later. I received some confirmation, so um, I do believe this is a rapture dream. I've never had one before, so uh, it's it's going to be it's going to seem uh, like that probably to you because it did to me. Um, and I'll at the end I'll share what verses the Lord sent me to in Scripture to try and confirm some of this. So. But before I start, I have to say that about maybe a month ago, maybe maybe a month and a half ago, I received um, a feeling or some sort of confirmation that right now we are in the season where the churches of men are being uncovered. And what I mean is um, the Lord is looking at the churches and um, he's judging them for the fruit that they are beginning to bear or not bear. So uh, it was put upon my spirit that the churches of men need to be uh, uh, not confronted, but perhaps um, um, spoken to or shown to understand that we need to get back to a gospel-based message for people. And I've noticed uh, quite a bit of churches where I'm from, there are a lot of churches that are closing down. And its I don't think that's a coincidence. I think there's a reason for church attendance is plummeting. There are few, fewer and fewer people in the seats of some of these churches. And it's causing a lot of uh, closures and the different churches are trying to consolidate. So having said that, I'm going to talk about this dream. So it starts out, I'm at someone's home. I don't know whose home it was, but when I'm there, I ask them to use the washroom. So a person that I'm speaking to, I'm assuming was the homeowner, said, yeah, follow me. I'll show you it's, it's down here. They lead me down a corridor. The corridor reminds me of a tavern that I used to uh, go to from time to time years and years ago. And I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, I remember this place. Uh, the bathrooms are just down here around the corner, blah, blah, blah. And uh, so I went in, and as soon as I opened the door, I noticed something very funny about the bathroom. Off to my right, I noticed that hanging in front of the stalls, the bathroom stalls, were hunks of meat and it was kind of like it was it was like uh, cow carcasses that have been gone through the slaughter and are now on meat hooks in cold storage or in a, a meat locker that's exactly what they look like and there was a couple of them hanging and I thought that was a really this is a really weird place to be putting your your meat to be and I assume that in this place there was some sort of restaurant because why would you have meat hanging off a hook unless you were cooking it or using it some kind of a, as a restaurant. And But having it in the bathroom completely grossed me out and there was flies everywhere and it just really was, was really disgusting. Anyway, I had to go to the bathroom so bad I thought I'm just going to get in and get out. So as I go to the urinal and I start using the urinal and I'm peeing, I realize I'm not actually peeing in a urinal, I'm peeing in a wheelbarrow and it's full of urine. And I'm thinking that this is really odd that you know, the plumbing must not be working and they're replacing the urinal with a, a wheelbarrow. But as I'm looking down at the wheelbarrow, I'm realizing that in the, the water or the urine, there's a fish. And I'm focusing in on this fish, really focusing in on it. And I can tell that the fish is barely alive. It's still moving. 
uh, it's still moving its mouth as if it was trying to um, get oxygen out of whatever was in there. But it, it, I was made known that this fish is not doing very well. It's, it's, it's struggling to survive. And instantly I was like, oh my goodness, like well, who would ever put a fish in a bucket of urine? That's disgusting. What kind of person does this? And uh, I, you know, I just kind of shrugged it off and turned to leave. And I realized I'm standing in water. And I realized, or I think, think to myself, oh, there must be some kind of a leak. And there was water all over the floor. But as I turned to go to leave, I noticed the door to the bathroom. There's water piling in under the door. So I realized there's some kind of massive leak. I opened the door uh, to get out and I realized as I turned to the left, I'm now in the basement of this place, wherever it is I am. Uh, and there's stairs going up to the upper level and I noticed that there's water pouring down the stairs. So my first reaction was, I gotta get out of here, the place is flooding. So I run up the stairs and as I get to the top of the stairs, I'm looking out a window like a door and I see water rushing in under the door and it looks like there's water all around this house now. So I run to the back, uh, realizing somehow that the back door, there was no water coming in. So I open the back door, I walk out, and I'm on some sort of beach. There's sand everywhere. Uh, but off in the distance, I can see water, and it's coming in. It's not encroaching onto me, but it's within about 10 feet or 20 feet of me. And as I walk, begin to walk around the home to try and survey what's going on with the land, because when I first got there, there was no water anywhere at sight. There was no water. I was in a regular neighborhood with all kinds of houses everywhere. And I just asked this person if I could use their bathroom. Anyway, now there's water all around the front of the home. And I can tell that it's not just water, but it's the ocean. And I'm somehow I'm on some sort of like this house and a portion of its property is being protected somehow. The water is not encroaching in, but basement of this house is flooding because there's enough water coming in that it would go down to the basement uh, and flood it out but that's pretty much my feeling was that's all it was going to do but as I'm sort of gauging what's going on here I see way off in the distance off to another piece of land like maybe four or five kilometers or miles away I see a city and the city is completely collapsing I mean, tall, massive skyscrapers completely collapsing in. And I know instantly in my spirit that there's an earthquake. And it's a big one, a massive earthquake. And that's probably why there's so much water where we are, because the, the earthquake was probably out somewhere in the ocean and there's been some sort of tsunami or whatever that's come in. Anyway, my mind was telling me that the earthquake is causing this huge uh, destruction of the city. And everything's imploding. And I'm looking around and everything is just completely going to waste. There's people screaming. I didn't see anybody around me, but I could hear screaming and calamity, a lot of calamity going on. And I look up into the sky and I say, Lord, please protect me. And as soon as I said that, the sky, uh, it didn't open up, but there was this huge, massive, bright light. It had like pinks and purples and blues. I mean, it was so white. It actually had color in it, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. But, And I knew as soon as I saw this, I was completely at peace. And I had no, I was not afraid anymore. Not that I was afraid to begin with. I had this feeling that I wasn't, there wasn't anything that was going to happen to me. But I was just afraid that whatever was happening all around me, I just wanted to be reassured that it's not going to hurt me. And this gave me the reassurance. As soon as I saw this, I felt like, oh, this is my reassurance. Nothing's going to happen. And then the dream ended. There was nothing else after that. So I was kind of disappointed because I was hoping that I was going to go up. Um, but that's it. Uh, so when I woke up in the morning, I realized I had this dream. And uh, so I was somewhat disturbed by it. And I, I really asked the Lord to show me what this dream meant. And so I did some research and I tried to figure things out. And the Lord sort of showed me that um, there's a couple of things going on with this dream. One, that it was a rapture dream of some sort. Uh, and when I say of some sort, um, a variation of whatever the rapture is going to look like, this was something of it. Um, but the fact that I was in a bathroom at first, 
So the Lord told me that uh, the meat hanging in the bathroom uh, represented the meat which should be the nourishment from the church for its people that it's ministering to has become tainted and it's no longer providing an adequate uh, sustenance for our spirit for our, for the body of Christ uh, he showed me that a couple places and I'll, I'll add in the description below I'll add links to different verses in the Bible that he sent me to to talk about that and uh, so the, the meat was, was dirty and tainted and it's no longer good to eat. Um, the fish in the urine, it was brought to my attention or it was dropped into my spirit that the fish represented Christians, people who call themselves Christians, but they're being polluted by a, either the wrong message or their own interpretation of what the church is so a combination of they're not they're not receiving good doctrine they're not being taught good um, true gospel of Christ and that they're being polluted by it and that they're barely hanging on and I, I do think that this is part of the end times uh, prophecies that are throughout the Bible uh, that are against are talking about the church its lukewarmness or its complete lack of faith going in its own direction and pleasing itself and not looking for the pleasure to to please the lord and looking for his guidance and there's no fear of the lord anymore in that sense so that led me to thinking that the fish was symbolic of the Jesus fish that we see around and that um, that kind of represents the body of Christ and people who are Christians and that uh, it's it's not it's not doing very well um, so and of course the water on the floor represented that time was running out and I had to get out of there and I had to get to where I needed to be uh, as part of my role uh, with the Lord uh, part of my role in the end or part of my role uh, in some other sense that the Lord has for me. So again, I was at completely at peace when the whole thing was happening. I didn't fear that anything was going to happen to me. In fact, obviously nothing was happening to me because I was basically by myself on an island and I was perfectly safe. The waters all around me were very calm. Uh, even though there must have been a massive calamity, um, and uh, yeah, and off in the distance, I could see things happening, and they weren't really affecting where I was. But, but, so part of the message I believe that the Lord wants me to talk about with this is that take a good deep look inside of yourself. Ask yourself, what is it you are doing within the body of Christ? Decide whether or not the information that you're receiving either at your church or, you know, are you reading the Bible, nourishing yourself? Stop listening to what somebody else is telling you and go into the Bible and look at the doctrine and look at the Gospels yourself and read them. Allow the Holy Spirit to teach you himself. This is key. This is extremely important that you understand this. The Bible is very easy to understand if you allow yourself to be like a child and interpret it like a child. The Lord doesn't want people who think that they are extremely intelligent in the scriptures. He doesn't want people who feel that they have extreme wisdom and knowledge and therefore they can dissect different pieces within the Bible, different books, scriptures, and trying to have some sort of heightened enlightenment about it. Surely I tell you, those of you who are very humble and you're reading your Bible and you're listening to the Spirit, you will get everything you're supposed to get from the Holy Spirit and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Every bit of it you'll get. Uh, just have faith. Keep going. Keep reading. Meditate. Ask for guidance. Ask for wisdom on what you're reading. It will be given to you. Guaranteed. 
Keep going. Don't stop. The love of the Lord will be with you. You know, part of the part of the some of the scripture that comes to mind is, you know, there's a reason why the Lord keeps saying, unless you become like a child, you will never see the kingdom of God because the humility and the complete trust in our Lord is what's key. Um, and a sense of being naive to things and putting your complete trust in the Lord and not allowing yourself to be polluted or diluted by something else. So I'll put some verses in the bottom here that, that the Lord had led me to. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, remember, um, something that came to me that was put into my spirit was, you know, the Lord never said to memorize Scripture. He said to become it and obey it. Thanks.